So we do a lot of brewing of beer and eating of tacos and screwing around. But one of the things that we, well, a couple of the things we never really talk about are our equipment. And one, the fact that they're sort of like, I don't know, the Lego version of brewing systems. And two, that the brewing system actually works and is compatible with our distillation equipment. So in this video, we're gonna explain that. So there are a lot of cool things about the Callhammer brewing system, such as the fact that they're modular, which allows you to mix and match all sorts of stuff, like the controller, the pump, and the chiller. Yeah, the great thing about that is if something fails, you can buy a replacement part probably at your local homebrew shop. Oh yeah, if sure. If not, definitely online, but we sell parts and we have a year warranty, so you don't really have to worry. GFCI fails on the end of your controller. You go to Home Depot and you buy a new GFCI. Right. Like literally that day and you finish your brew exactly. day. Exactly. The heating yeah. element fails. Yeah. We sell them, you can go on Amazon, mm -hmm. all the manufacturers sell them. Right, so. yeah. So probably the one component that isn't gonna be an off the shelf part is our controller, obviously. Oh like, yeah, right. So we offer a one year warranty on that. And then if something were to happen down the road, you can send it back to us, we'll repair it. Minimal fee basically covers shipping. So I think it's like 25 bucks now. Mm -hmm. uh, you ship it to us, we fix it, put all the parts in that are needed, send it back to you. We reinstate your one year warranty. So you're mm -hmm. good for another year. That way you don't have to worry. Yeah, we have some instructional videos that people can watch to do some like real basic repairs themselves like the GFCI. But a couple of the things that we never really talk about, not shockingly because we're really bad at communicating this stuff sometimes. The systems are, they're designed to be kind of like built like Legos. They they all actually work together and all of the brewing equipment also works with our distillation equipment which is designed in the same way you can build that stuff up just like you can with our brewing system I mean I kind of think of it as like you know you're building a custom computer and you buy the box and then you get the motherboard you add the RAM I don't know how to build a computer every system on our site has a full version and a starter version so you can buy the starter version of our ten and a half gallon kettle. That comes with the kettle, the grain basket. Yep, we also give you a ball valve and one fitting there, and then obviously a cap for the back of the, the heating element adapter, so it just caps it off. Really, everything you would need to make a batch of extract beer on a stove top. You could probably even do all grain. Throw an optional thermometer in there and manually adjust your temperature, but. Yeah, so the reason we did this was because both Emma and I, when we first started brewing, went out and bought like a dumb canning pot, and then moved on to the next thing but with this brew system one you know it has a basket with it which makes it way more functional and a valve you know a drain valve on the bottom right but it also has all the fittings for the full brew system so the full 10 gallon 120 volt system which comes with a controller a pump and a chiller hoses and a heating element so you can do like legit super easy all grain batches or extract batches if you yeah, want totally. with your own dedicated power source and your own control that allows you to just dial in heat. I think the one thing we're really bad at communicating is saying, hey, start with the starter system if you don't want to yeah. drop a ton of coin and then you yeah. can easily upgrade. We sell a package that includes all the parts that are missing from the starter to the full. And you upgrade by just hopping on our website and you click the upgrade button. It does cost a little bit more because we are sending you two different boxes and there's you know extra labor as well. The other thing too is if you started with the 10 gallon starter and you didn't want to go 120, you wanted to go 240. Exactly. You can go that route as well. The 240 volt controllers are quite a bit more expensive. So let's just say I don't want to invest in that. Or let's say you do want that, but the house you're in currently only has 120 volt power. It doesn't have like a 240 volt outlet that you would need, but you move into a house that does. You can start with a 120 volt controller, then get a 240 volt controller and a more powerful element when you're ready. And if you do do the upgrade to 240, keep your 120 because people always email and say, you know, I'm going to sell this. I'm like, just keep it. If you want to bring it to a friend's house, yeah, you, never you want know. to brew outside, mm -hmm. it's super nice. You go on the deck or the front porch. Because when you have a 240 element, you're stuck in yeah, that yeah, spot, which is fine. You're stuck at that where your plug is. And right. we've done that. We've taken our brew system other places and yeah. we take the 120, not the 240. Yeah. Let's just say you're not wanting to make a whole lot of beer or you're not making very high gravity beers, but you get a hankering to make some barley wine or something crazy like that. Yeah. Some triples, some quads, triples, some big quads, boys. Some big boys, right? What you can do actually is if you already have a 10 gallon with a 240 volt controller, 
you can just upgrade it to the 20 gallon kettle, which gives you a lot more space, right? So you can brew bigger batches and also brew much higher gravity beers if you're doing like, you know, smaller batches. And you don't have to get a new pump, you don't have to get new hoses, and you don't have to get a new chiller. Yeah, that's kind of the beauty of it because everything's interchangeable. It's simple. That was easy. The only thing that you would probably want to get is the 20 gallon hot basket. Oh, it's a yeah, little bit it's longer. longer. That's the only thing that yeah. would be different. You can't brew more than five gallons of beer period with a 120 volt controller. You need a 240 if you're going above that. So if you're trying to brew like 10 full gallons of beer, you're gonna need a 240 volt controller. You can't just oh, yeah. use the 120 and bump it up, you know, yeah, twice it's, the capacity. It's just not enough power. Yeah. Now, let's say you're done brewing lawnmower beers and you wanna brew some super dank IPAs. You would want, potentially, a Whirlpool arm. Or, let's just say you don't want a Whirlpool arm, you just want more hot baskets. You just buy another hot basket. Yep and they fit right in. But you could also just get a Whirlpool arm, bypass the hot basket. Totally. You're off to the races. But yeah, we've never tried to use the uh, 10 in the um, 20, but it, it might work. It actually. might, it would just yeah. be a little bit higher up. Somebody test that out and let us know. Yeah, let us know. I know I personally like to brew a lot of smaller batches, so I'll brew two and a half right. and three gallon batches just because it takes forever to go through five gallons of beer anymore. 10 and a half gallon kettle will be the one you want for that because that'll allow you to brew two and a half, three gallon batches with, mm -hmm. with no problem. So you can brew two and a half gallons all the way up to five gallons in the 10 gallon kettle. And then you can brew five gallon all the way up to 10 gallon batches in the 20 gallon kettles. And then let's just say you've been bottling your beer and you're tired of doing that. Or you've been fermenting in buckets, which we carry, but you're tired of doing that. Well, at some point, in the near future, we'll have our keg fermenter ready and you'll be able to do fermentation and serve in the same vessel. One of the coolest parts about our brewing systems is that they're also compatible with our stills, which we never really do a whole lot of talking about. We're actually gonna start getting into that this year. Um, and it's probably why we've never mentioned it, but the controller is a 120 volt controller and the 1650 watt element, as well as a 240 volt controller and the the 5500 watt element are both compatible with our stills. So you can have a still that is heated with digital electric power, which allows you to really dial in you know, what you're doing with that. And you don't have to worry about an open flame right. or putting it on top of a burner. Um, the way we have the controller tuned when you put in percentage of power, there's no cycling. Yeah, exactly. If you're not familiar with the distillation process, you want a nice, even, consistent heat, yep. which our controllers provide if you're just using a hot plate, it's like on, off, on, off, on, off. Makes and that strange. makes the still do all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, I guess I should clarify. The 240 volt controller is only compatible with our eight gallon stainless steel stills. Yep. And that's just due to the length of the element. The element, yeah, sure. So our copper stills, the five and the 10 five gallon and the 10. are compatible with the 120 volt controller. Yeah. And then the one gallon is perfect for just a little stove top. And the stills are actually designed in the same way that our brewing systems are and that they themselves are modular. So you can swap out the columns on the stainless steel stills. You could go all stainless, yep. you can go to a copper column, then you have condenser options as well. You can use an inline condenser, you can use a shotgun condenser, and all of these things can be mixed and matched. And then I think one of the coolest things we've done with the stills is that our basic eight gallon still, which mm -hmm. can be used to make distilled water, essential oils, fuel alcohol, and spirits, of course, with the proper permits, also is half of our essential oil still. So if you have one of our stainless steel stills and you're like, oh, I wanna get into distilling essential oils, which requires you to have a large one vessel for boiling water if you're steam distilling and then a large vessel that you can fill with plant material, you just buy the other half of the essential oil still and now you have complete oils distiller. You can take the second half off, just go back to distilling regular right. stuff. And we get that question a lot. Like, yeah. hey, if I get the essential oils, can I distill? other things in it. It's like, yeah, of course, just set yep. it up the other way. Try and make it easy, but we're not mm -hmm. good at letting people know that it's an option. Now, we assumed you know. Now you actually do know. Your mom should know too, so you should tell her and like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.